and Perry on BBC Radio Stoke. Do you, do you still have the, the tradition of fish and chips on a Friday? Friday chippy. Uh, bad news, you know, with fish and chips. Could be on the wane. Apparently the dish is disappearing from the menus in pubs and hotels. So five years ago, mm. fish and chips was the third most popular dish on the menu. Now, according to new research, it's dropped to eight. And it's because we're all ordering salads. You don't win friends with salad. You don't win friends with salad. It's getting popular. What's going on? What's the matter with people? Andrew Crook is from the National Federation of Fish Friars, owns his own chippy as well. Morning, Andrew. Good morning. What do you make of this terrible news? Uh, I think it's just indicative that people like to go to the fish and chip shop for fish and chips rather than the pub. I think uh, we've got a special place in the nation's heart, and I think there's something special about visiting the fish and chip shop. There's a bit of theatre with it. So are you saying that as far as the fish fries are concerned, the fish and chip shops, uh, business is booming still? Yeah, we're doing well. I mean, uh, we always quote 10,500 fish and chip shops. I think it's probably close to 12,000 fish and chip shops now. Really? Uh, we're attracting professional people are leaving other industries and, and coming into fish and chips and seeing is it a good career. Are they not doing it right, Andrew, in pubs and, and, and hotels and that? I think some pubs do produce reasonably good fish and chips. I, I, I certainly do, but I think we've got the equipment more geared up for producing fish and chips. And I, I also think we serve it with a bit of passion, which you don't get when you go to a chain restaurant or a pub. I think uh, it's one of the last places you see people from your village. It's, you know, you see your neighbours in a fish and chip shop. Is there's a community feel, and it's, there's something special about it that we don't want to lose. If it is that they're going for salads, if they're, go, if they're seeing it as an unhealthy dish, and so when they're sat in a restaurant, they're going for salads, are they selling it well enough? Because is it actually, it's quite good for you? It is for, for some reasons, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, fish, chips and peas are a nutritionally balanced meal, and the fat content's around about 10%, which compares very well per 100 grams to any other takeaway. The problem we've got, the portions are quite big, and I think some shops try to win customers or buy customers by giving bigger portions. And I think the general public buy a portion of chips and share it between two or three people. Uh, and I think, on, as a rule, we need to get the portions down. If you go to a, a national burger chain, uh, you'll get three to four ounces of fries, whereas we serve probably 10, 12, 14 ounces of chips, which is probably too much for one person to eat. So I've noticed that. Forward. It's difficult as well, because if you go to a chip shop you're not used to, um, I, I always find it's... it's this is I ask you what size portion you want. Well, you never really know, do you? Because you have to. What's the custom round here? Is it a JCB load or not? You never know, do you? Well, this is it. But I mean, the individuality is part of our strength as well. But I yeah. do think, as an industry, we do need to try and standardise a little bit the, the the portion sizes and just try and educate the, the general public that yeah, we'll offer a sharing portion, but an individual portion should be for one person, if you know what I mean. Are people still turning up on Fridays? Is that still the biggest day for fish and chip shops? It certainly is in mine. I think the majority of shops it's Friday. I, I think historically it was a religious thing. I think now it's Friday chippy tea, and I think people just uh, they've got into the habit of fish and chips on a Friday, which of course we love. And it's, how, it's the best day to work. How are we doing, Andrew, on this uh, diversifying with our fish? Do you remember the big, the big campaign trying to get people to stop eating cod? They were lowering supplies and get them onto haddock and pollock and other. How are we doing with that in your experience? Well, well, I mean, what we've done as an industry over 14 years, we've worked with the fishermen, Seafish have coordinated it, um, worked with the suppliers and obviously the fish and chip shops, and we've managed the, the fisheries so that there's now no shortage of fish. It, it's, you don't need to worry about it. Many shops are accredited uh, to prove that the fish is sustainable as well. But there, there's definitely no shortage of fish. Everybody in the industry has worked hard to make sure that fish and chips are on the menu for the future. So, so it was Hugh Fernley with in store, wasn't he? He did a yeah. big show on it, the big fish fight. Was he wrong then about that? He, I wouldn't say he was totally wrong, but he was trying to get people to make, buy mackerel baps. I was actually in the background on the first programme. Oh, right. I was at a function they attended. Um, it's not the way to go. The way to go is manage the fisheries to make sure that the fish that's sold is sustainable rather than try and get people to change habits because people do want uh, cod or haddock or yeah. egg, whichever is popular in their area. So yeah. the thing is to sort the supply out, which is what we've done. Personally speaking, though, I wouldn't yeah. mind more choice. But uh, anyway, that's just my view. Yeah. Andrew Crook, great to speak to you. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Big fan of haddock myself yeah. over cod. I, like haddock, I think yeah. it's far tastier. And yeah, I agree with you, actually. Andrew Crook there from the National yeah. Federation of Fish Fryers, and uh, you probably know he has his own fish and chip shop as well. Here's Don Henley, BBC Radio Stoke.